Hey guys, I thought I'd do a little video here on my favorite tabletop game, Wings of Glory. I know we all like playing it, so I thought I'd go over uh, some interesting subtleties in the maneuver decks of the uh, various aircraft and how there's a lot more historical grounding in this game uh, than might seem on the surface. So I know uh, every time we play, I'm usually somewhat insistent that we pick airplanes of more or less from the same uh, part of the war. And uh, that's because, as I've said before, the maneuver decks really kind of reflect the relative capabilities of the aircraft. So what I thought I'd do is uh, go through, talk about a few of the uh, little subtle things in the maneuver decks, uh, do a couple of demonstrations of some different maneuvers and things just to uh, show you guys kind of how grounded and uh, historically, uh, I'd use the term accurate loosely, but uh, how historically accurate this game actually is. So the uh, first thing I'll talk about is the Immelman turns, because uh, they're always feature a big part of this game, uh, regardless of which airplanes you're flying. Uh, then I thought I'd get a little more into just some differences in the different decks between different aircraft, how that reflects their historical accuracy or their uh, historical counterparts and just a couple of other things to think about with the different decks and uh, different ways you can play them uh, to make some rather interesting combinations with uh, different airplanes. So starting with the Immelman, we're all familiar with this maneuver. It takes all three cards played within a turn or uh, can be played over successive turns and it's made up of your straight, your Immelman card, followed by another straight. This is one maneuver I typically like to house rule a bit. Uh, we haven't really done it in any of the games we've played, but I'll show you why here. I'll demonstrate to you what an Immelman actually looks like. And to do that demonstration, I'll be using an airplane I typically fly in Wings of Glory, the Bristol Fighter. So an Immelman starts by flying straight and level, pulling up almost to the vertical, waiting just before a stall, kicking the rudder, and then leveling the plane out of the ensuing dive. If done properly, you shouldn't lose or gain any altitude uh, doing this maneuver, doing them in a real airplane. From a stationary perspective, uh, we can kind of see the stall and everything a little better. So the plane goes almost to the vertical, execute what basically looks like a hammerhead turn, and then comes back to the horizontal. Now you'll notice here that the plane's actually displaced a little to the side. It didn't come out in exactly reciprocal to uh, how it went in, uh, which is exactly how the moment turn is performed in Wings of Glory. So one potential modification you can make is actually displacing the plane to the side. And you could do that to either the left or right side. And uh, that's one of those things to just kind of help the uh, back and forth constant uh, Immelman jousting that happens in the game. There's also no reason an Immelman has to roll out at 180 degrees. Uh, you could in theory roll out in any direction you want. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this to reflect it in Wings of Glory. This is what this maneuver would actually look like. So we roll to the vertical, and then instead of coming 180 degrees, we roll out at 90 degrees. In Wings of Glory, this could be reflected like this. There may be some advantages to doing a maneuver like this instead of just using the normal turns in the card deck. So for example, if you were about to run off the board or you wanted to pull a very sharp 90 degree turn and had already had a straight maneuver planned. Ultimately, this is really just a house rule that helps with the infinite Immelman jousting that Wings of Glory can tend to develop into, with a side effect of possibly reducing collisions when two airplanes Immelman into each other. We know the Immelman is a three card maneuver and takes an entire turn to perform. It's lengthy regardless of which airplane you're flying in Wings of Glory. It's worth taking a look at some of the other airplanes or other airplanes, such as the Sopwith Triplane, another one of my favorites. The Sopwith Triplane historically had a very sharp turn radius, 
combined with a good rate of roll due to ailerons on all of its wings, the aircraft was surprisingly nimble, despite looking, as one ground observer put it, like a tumbling staircase. Quick historical fact, it was the appearance of this airplane in 1916 that inspired the Germans to make their own triplane, the much better known Fokker Drydecker. The triplane takes the same three cards, straight, Immelmann, straight, to pull off a 180 degree turn using the Immelmann. However, the U deck has these 90 degree turn cards in it. Note that these are not steep maneuvers, meaning you can play them right after each other. What this allows you to do in a Sopwith triplane is execute a steep 180 degree turn in two cards instead of the required three for an Immelmann. And because these are not steep maneuvers, that gives you a lot of freedom for a follow-up maneuver where normally you'd be stuck with playing a straight maneuver. Other aircraft in the game have similar quirks like this, and some have a 90 degree turn that is a steep maneuver. So it's worth looking through your deck carefully and seeing what kind of options any given aircraft gives you for maneuvering outside of the normal Immelman jousting. Going the other way, we'll take a look at the Spot 13. You can see here I'm maneuvering using full control extension, and the airplane is doing comparatively lazy turns. It does not turn or roll very fast. Once again, this is reflected in its Wings of Glory maneuver deck. Taking a look at the A deck, the only steep maneuvers we see are stalls. There are no sharp turns and no steep slip maneuvers. The Spot 13 has one large advantage though. It's a very fast aircraft. The A deck is one of the fastest decks in Wings of Glory. This is very obvious if we compare it side by side with a Fokker Eindecker, one of the earliest fighters of the war. Aside from the five hit point difference, we can see that the straight maneuver card for the A deck is nearly twice the length of the straight maneuver card for the T deck, showing that the Spod is a significantly faster aircraft. This is also why when playing Wings of Glory with aircraft like the Spod 13, you want at least two mats on the table. These speed differences can have a big impact on the way the aircrafts maneuver, which is another reason why it's a good idea to match aircraft of a similar era. Other decks also have interesting cards that reflect their historical counterparts. The Fokker D7 is reputed to have the ability to almost hang off the propeller, that is, come to an almost stop in the air without stalling and resume normal flight. The L deck represents this by having these nifty stall turn cards in it. When combined with other non-steep maneuvers, such as the 90 degree turn, this lets you pull off some unique maneuvering. For example, this maneuver might put the D7 in an excellent firing position on the weenie that just pulled an Immelman. So I didn't go into too much detail there, just uh, hopefully it gives you some food for thought on the different aircraft in Wings of Glory and how they're historically represented within the game. I think Wings of Glory is up to something like 30 maneuver decks now. So there's, uh, there's quite a lot of variance in uh, the different aircraft. Anyway, just something to think about.